Okay. Now, variation in value of G. G, gravitational acceleration, being 9.81 at the surface, right? So let's do a little bit of recap of what we talked about last time. Here, okay, this is Earth. And the radius measured from center, R. We are going to put it as capital R. And it's 6,400 kilometer. Okay, now considering if we are at the surface, again, when I say at the surface, it's nine kilometer, 10 kilometers still at the surface. It's very, very small compared to the radius. Okay, so the G at the surface, we already derived the formula last time, right? It's equals to G M E, the mass of the earth, divided by the radius of the earth. So G, I'll write it as G S means the G at surface, huh? G at surface. Okay, what if, uh, what if your object is at a certain altitude above the surface? And this altitude is quite significant. Let's name it H. Can be a few thousand km. Then what, is, what will be the G or the gravitational acceler acceleration experienced by this object here? Okay, G S, again, we can derive it, right? This one, uh, the R, uh, the general formula of G is G equals to GM over R, right? So this one we put capital R is because we want to find the G at the surface. So if you want to find the G at H, certain altitude above, then we would say GME divided by R plus the H. Okay, okay, I forgot a square, sorry. Here you got a square. This one also got a square. Okay, R plus H square okay comparing this one this one is the gravitation acceleration at a height this is at surface which one is bigger which one is smaller you can easily see looking at the denominator of the fraction which one is bigger this one is r this one you got r plus another value so the denominator of this one is bigger so if this is bigger then the gh will be smaller so I know that G H is smaller than G S. Okay. So from here, we know that the gravitational acceleration at any height that is above the surface uh, is always smaller. In fact, if you go higher, if the value of H is big, then the denominator gets bigger and bigger and the value of the G gets smaller and smaller and eventually you go out at certain point you will know you will no longer experience the gravitational acceleration okay so i can conclude that g at height is always smaller than g on surface Okay, now example, the G experienced by satellites, how high is satellites? Depending on what type of satellite. Okay, usually if you are talking about uh, typical value, huh? so this is the earth. And let's say we want to find what is the gravitational acceleration experienced by this satellite, which is at an altitude of 20,200 km from the surface of the earth. Okay, then we can find use which one use which one formula now. Uh, I don't I don't want you to think about like okay which formula do I use? Okay, you'd have to understand that uh, regardless of which formula, right? So you are dealing with the R uh, is the radius, the distance from the center of one object to the center of another one. Okay, so understand that this one the G equals to G M over R square. Okay, from center center. So the radius of the earth, km. Okay, so I will say that G equals to 6.67 times 10 power of negative 11 times the mass of the earth, 5.97 times 10 power of 24 in kg divided by the 
radius, the distance, right? So this one, be careful, 20200 km, you have to change to meter times three plus 6400 times three, okay? Three more zeros. And this whole thing, you have to square it, okay? Square it, okay, what is the value you get? 6.67 times. <clears throat> Let's see, on top, this one you get 3.98 times 10 power of 14. And then at the bottom, okay, this one is 7.08 times 10, 14. Okay, divide them, then you get uh, 0. Okay, something's wrong with this. Three point, let's see. Yeah. Zero point five six. MS minus two. Okay, the G value at this altitude. Okay, so the G value at any altitude would be different. The one at the surface would be 9.81. Okay, so this is how the G varies with altitude. Okay, when going up from the surface or at the surface, it is maximum. Later, I'll, later you will see why is the maximum. Okay, we haven't talked about in the inside the surface again. Okay, now we are only talking about increase in altitude. Okay, so when you go altitude, then the G will decrease. And at the distance far enough, then the G would be zero. Now, how about inside the earth? Inside the earth. Does the G change inside the earth? If I go inside the earth, I cannot literally go inside the earth, right? But conceptually, conceptually, if I'm, if I'm here at a distance here, then what would be my G? Is it going to be 9.8 or does it increase or does it decrease? Okay, now before that, uh, before we talk about how it changes inside the earth, okay, we, we want to compare, sometimes we want to compare because the question will ask you, uh, okay, what is the, at what point, uh, at what point where the G is one fourth of the G at the surface? At what altitude? At what altitude where the gravitational field strength is one fourth of the G at the surface. How do I, how do, how, how do we find that? Okay, so we come up with an equation to compare these two. So by comparing these two, we take this one divided by this one. G H divided by G S. Okay, so G H is G M E divided by R plus H square over G M E divided by R square. Okay, you divide this one, you get what? You get GH over GS, R square over R plus H square. And then you move this one over, GH tengi, R square over R plus H square GS. So this is comparison. We know that the gravitational acceleration at a certain height is going to be equal to this factor of the surface gravitational acceleration, okay? So if the question asks, okay, at what point where G is one fourth, then you know this is, okay, if this is one fourth R over R plus H square equals to one fourth of GS, what would be my R? Okay, then you solve, RH equals to this square, you move it over, right? So it becomes square root and then two R equals to R plus H. And then you move the R, then you get H is equals to R. Okay, so what does it mean? Meaning that at when the G is one fourth, the altitude is equals to the radius. So if I draw it on the diagram, then it is somewhere here. This is the earth, this is the radius. So another one more radius here. This is hatch at here. So if the object is here, then the G is 
one fourth of the G at the surface. Okay, formula to remember this one. And also the general equation of the G, this one. Okay, this one is just deriving. Okay, I'm just defining this R as the surface. Doesn't matter one, these two equations, it's the same thing. You just memorize the, the general equation. This one. Okay, and also understand that uh, the G decreases when altitude increases. Okay, next one, we look at how does the G change when we go inside the Earth? Okay, let me go to the next page. Okay, variation of G at that. Assuming that this is the earth, now center. Now we are at a certain distance below the surface here. Okay, conceptually. Yeah? Now, this one at depth, at depth D, let's define our G first. I know that the G is not going to be the same as the surface, so I'll just use a new unknown. I'll call it G dash, okay, G dash. Okay, what is the force acting on the object if it's inside the earth here? We can find it, we can prove it mathematically. What is the distance here? Here and here would be the radius minus the depth, right? Radius of the earth minus the depth is this distance. And this distance is our R. Needed naga F dengi GMM mass of earth and mass of object over R square. So F okay fang mg m the object the m was the earth. So it's the object mg equals to G M E M O divided by R minus D square. Cancel off this one, this one, this one, we get G equals to G M E over R minus D squared. Okay, now here's the thing. Because the object is inside the earth, so when we calculate the G, right, the mass of the earth, what do we use for the mass of the earth, this one? The mass of the earth is, not, is no longer the entire mass of the earth already. Because imagine, uh, just common sense, if it's inside, right, then there are, there are many, there are, sorry, there are some masses uh, that is not being counted. We cannot count the mass. For example, like mass in this outer region here. Outer region here. Look at the inner sphere. We only count the mass in the inner sphere for this one. Okay? So... The mass contained by the sphere is definitely going to be less than the mass of the Earth. So this is, instead of writing Me, right, it should be much lower. It should be much lower. Okay, then how do we find the mass of the inner sphere? This sphere inside here, how do we find this? Okay, now there is a law that says, uh, if the object is here, inside here, then the particle, uh, outside in the outer region, this particle here will try to attract it. Yes, they will still try to attract it. Particle here also, they will try to attract it. But these two particles, their effect will be cancelled out by each other. Okay? The effect of all the particles outside the region, okay, outside the inner sphere, they have a force of attraction on the object because they has mass, right? But the force of attraction is going to be cancelled off by each and every particle of it. So in all directions. So that's why we don't need to count the mass in the outer region. Okay? So they actually have a formula. They actually can prove it like mathematically, geometrically. But we are not going to go through that one. Okay? It's just that the bottom line is the mass in the outer region are not 
taking part, not counted in the calculation of the G, this one. Okay? So to find this one, the mass of the inner sphere, how do we find it? Let the average density, let the average density be rho, okay? And then we know that mass is equal to volume times into density. And then this mass is what mass? The mass of the inner sphere that we want to find equals to the volume four over three, since it is a sphere, a sphere pi, the R cube, right? The radius now becomes smaller already. So R minus D cube times the density, okay? The density of the earth is the same because it's the same planet, right? Density is the same. So the density, I can write it as what? Density, mass divided by volume, now, the mass or young mass of the Earth, volume of Earth is 4 over 3 pi r cube. This is density. Okay, put that in. Me over 4 over 3 pi r cube. Okay, now, then you can just cancel. Uh. This one cancel, this one cancel. We get what? We get... M E R T N D sun over R sun. This is the mass of the inner sphere. This one. Let's call it equation two. Okay. Now to find the G at the depth, we put the mass of the inner sphere inside the form, inside the equation, inside the formula. Okay, so just substitute G, you get what? G equals to, okay, this one I forgot a dash, right? This one should be have a dash. G dash equals to G M E. So M E R T N D sun to E R sun, now R T N D. Uh, okay, so you need G dash, then G M E R minus D divided by R3. Okay, still following, huh? still following. Okay, it just it looks complicated, but it's just substituting, right? Substitution and uh, uh, mathematics. Okay, so from here, now what do we do next? Almost there. You, if you look at this equation, right, you cannot conclude anything. It just look like everything like bunched up together, but you cannot, you cannot see anything. But from here, I can substitute the G surface inside. What is the G at surface? G at surface is the G M E over R of the planet. 我把整个放进去，因为我要compare我的新的G跟我的旧的G是多少。OK，我compare，所以我把这个放进去。那我这边有GME吗？我这边有GME，我这边也有GME，所以我用这个substitute这个GSR等于GME。OK，R R R square，
over R and GS. Okay, you get this. What can you say about this one? Open the bracket. You see this R dash, a G dash equals to R over R minus D over R, GS. This whole thing become one. So G dash equals to one minus D over R and then GS. 当你把这个乘进去的话,你拿到GS,减掉一个 value. 所以G dash是等于G surface,减掉一个 value, 就是减少了,就是意思说 G dash是小过GS. Okay? Because if I open this bracket, you see this, G dash equals to GS minus D over R, GS. Definitely, this one is going to be smaller than GS because that is minus being subtracted by a certain value. Okay, so what does this conclude? What can we conclude about this one? From our expression, we can say that as you go deeper into the Earth, the gravitational acceleration also decreases. In fact, if you go deeper and deeper until at the center, so at the center, your depth becomes the radius, right? So that becomes the radius. So if you substitute inside here, you get this one radius. Radius divided by radius, okay, one divided by one. Gs minus Gs equal to zero. So at the center, the gravitational acceleration would be zero. Okay, the more depth, the less the gravitational acceleration. So looking at these two, you can say that this is the center. Where is the maximum G? Where is the maximum G? This is the center. Maximum G is at the surface. Why? Because when you go inside, the G will decrease. At the center, the G is zero. When you go above, the G will also decrease. And at some point, the G is also equals to zero. So the only maximum point is at the surface of the Earth. Yeah. <coughs> Sorry. Okay. So now that, that is for the gravitational acceleration. Now. Okay. I'm going to send you a short exercise, a few questions on the calculations using the gravitational acceleration. So you take, uh, like, we spend like half an hour on that one, and then I want to continue the next part, okay? Okay, I'll send the exercise in the group. Okay, nine questions. You take the time to do it. Any question, let me know in the chat. And we continue at about eight. Eight or eight ten. I want to talk about the Kepler's. <coughs> 